We're looking into spiritual practices that will help you love your walk with God and energize your life. Pastor Ken Shigematsu, you suggest that friendship is actually a spiritual practice. It's not an option. Mm -hmm. Friendship is a spiritual practice. What are you grounding that in? Social scientists tell us that we have these mirror neurons in our brain that cause us to mimic other people. And so if you're at a party and you're talking to someone and they reach their hand into a bowl and grab some chips, you're more likely to reach your hand into that bowl of chips and grab <laughs> some yourself. You're laughing right now. And I don't need much help to grab yeah. chips, but anyway. <laughs> you walk into a room where people are laughing. Even if you haven't heard the joke, you're, you're more likely to laugh or at least smile as well because emotions are contagious. Our mirror neurons also cause us to mimic other people's desires. And so if you wanna be a person who loves God and deeply desires to serve him, you will find a friend who also loves God and desires to serve him. Because the book of Proverbs tells us, walk with the wise and grow wise. Walk with those who love God and you will become a person who loves God as well. Wow, we feel that uh, two way here on mm -hmm. the camera. We have a great loyal audience. We, we get these 1200 calls and people want, every day mm -hmm. people are calling in for spiritual help mm -hmm. and prayer but you need it in the flesh mm -hmm. too. You so need this. I mean, if you go through in the New Testament and mm -hmm. just circle love one another, yeah. mm -hmm. this is God's plan, mm -hmm. is that we have physical friendships, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's part of spiritual zest. How do you get them? Yeah. Well, first of all, pray for them. A lot of people that are viewing have probably prayed for a romantic partner, maybe a spouse, but have you prayed for a spiritual friend? You know, Jesus pulled two all-nighters. One was famously before he went to the cross. The other all-nighter he pulled was as he prayed about who would be his disciples, people who would eventually become his friends. Wow, so really make it a mm -hmm. concentrated effort. Um, do you schedule time for it? I, I do, and so on my Sabbath, I will regularly connect with family and friends. And so I've got a friend named Elizabeth who I trained with through the Arrow program that mm -hmm. trained me to become a pastor. When Elizabeth was in college, she would walk around the Stanford campus with a javelin on her shoulder. She was on the track team, but there was also some rapist or some dangerous figure that was coming onto campus, so she wanted to scare him away. When I'm with Elizabeth, she will affirm the good things in me, but if I need it, she'll throw the javelin in a manner of speaking between my eyes and tell me I'm overworking or I'm in a situation where I might be tempted to compromise in some way morally. If you have a friend that you can trust enough to hold you accountable and to share your fears and insecurities with, your failures with, your hopes and dreams with, your life with God will flourish and you will also experience a lot more joy and meaning in your life. Okay, spiritual practice number seven, that was friendship. Uh, eight terrific ways, eight terrific practices, Ken, to keep us grounded and productive and fruitful with our relationship with God. Here's how you can get your copy and work through these spiritual practices.